hello everyone welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you how i made this Igbo blouse here's my fabric it's satin fabric folded into two using the bust measurement i'm working with divided by four plus extra five inches now for the length i added one inch to the length i'm working with which is 25 inches plus one making it 26 i went on ahead to mark my shoulder to nipple point and then my shoulder to under bust as you can see Next, I'm marking the bust band measurement I'm working with divided by 2 plus half inch allowance. I marked the entire measurement to the length of the top. So on the under bust line, I went out by one and a half inch. I marked it all the way down as you can see. And then on that nipple to nipple line, I marked half inch inwards on the down part like so. And I'm going to connect that to the bust point. Next, I'm marking the shoulder measurement I'm working with divided by 2 plus half inch allowance. Now, I am marking the ammo measurement I'm working with, which is 9 inches here. And then, I'm using my ruler to connect like so. Next, I mark 3 inches inwards from the folded end and then half inch on the ammo line and I'm connecting together to form the shoulder slope. From that point now, I am marking half of the armhole measurement. I came in by half inch and then I connected back to the shoulder point and then using my armhole curve, I'm going to curve the rest of my armhole. Next now, we are going to get the midpoint from that neck width and then we're going to connect that to the bust point as you can see so we're working with the shoulder that we're using the shoulder that here i'm using my armhole curve now to curve this point from the under bust to the bust point and then on this shoulder i marked one inch outwards and then half inch in i will be connecting all of those to the bust point now that we have marked the dart we are going to be extending our shoulder measurement and also our armhole measurement. Now, another option is to not cut out the armhole and the neck until you're done joining the front pieces together. But if you must, then you go on ahead and add the measurements you have on the dart to your armhole and then mark a new one. So the dart is one inch and half. So we're going to add another one to that, making two and a half. So you extend your shoulder measurement by two and a half inches. Next, now I am cutting. I won't be cutting out the neckline yet until we have joined the dark points together. I just made a notch on the mid points so I know which part is the upper part when we are joining. So this is your shoulder that bustier. Next, we are going to be cutting the back. So for the back now, we also have uh, our fabric folded into two. The same width as the front. That's the biggest measurement divided by four plus five inches. And then I went on to mark one and a half all the way down for the zip. Here I am marking the waistline. And on that waistline, I went in by half inch. I'm going to slant it out to 22 inches on the lower part and then 9 inches on the upper part. So from the shoulder to 9 inches and then to 22 inches. So I'm going to slant that out. That is to give the back a shape and eliminate some of the zip bulge. So on that zip line now, that's where our measurements are going to start. I am marking the I'm hold the shoulder measurement divided by two plus half inch and then I went ahead to mark the arm hole and then I went in by three inches just like we did in the front and then I came down by half inch on the arm hole line and I slanted to get the shoulder slope. I am marking the arm hole now which is nine inches same as the front and then we're going to get the middle of this arm hole 
then come in by half inch and then connect back to the shoulder and then curve the rest of the armhole using my armhole curve like so now for the back we are going to be using the waist dart so there's no cut out there's no shoulder dart at the back so down here i am going to up here rather i'm going to be marking the neck width so i used four inches for the neck width and then for the neck depth i used two inches that is for the back the front neckline like i said we're going to be marking that after joining the front pieces together so now we're cutting starting from the neckline and then the armhole we're also going to be cutting out the zip the extra the slant at the zip line like so and then opening up the rest of the back piece into two now we are going to go cut lining pieces exactly like this the lining piece is going to be shorter by one inch and then i also ironed breast part on the front pieces as you can see i went ahead to also hem the lower part of the satin and the lining pieces folded in and then this is the lace fabric we are working with i made it in such a way that the edge of the lace is going to be the hem of the blouse so using hemming gum now we're going to iron the lace to the satin piece so they become one and these are the side pieces as well. I've ironed the breast part onto it. And this is the lace piece also with the edge of the lace as the hem. So after all of that, we are going to join these pieces together. These are the side front pieces. And then this is the center front piece. We're going to place them right sides together. And starting from the lower part, we sew all the way up and do the same thing for the second one we are going to be repeating the same thing for the lining so place the lining pieces right sides together and then sew and this is what we have for the back piece we are going to be marking the dart so i am marking a new zip line remember we took out half inch there so we're going to be marking a new one, another one and a half in. And then, then from the shoulder, we are going to mark the waistline. And then one inch above the bust point. And then two inches before the hem of the blouse. So we're going to be marking the bust pan measurement. And then we will connect it all the way and then on the waistline we are going to mark half inch out on both sides connecting the slant to the lower part and then connecting the slant also to the upper part we're going to be doing the same thing for the opposite um back piece so now we'll be placing the lace on top of it also you can still use your hemming gum to iron them so they become one which will be a lot easier to work with after that we are going to fold like so and then sew that slant out like so here is the front we have joined the front pieces together and this is what we have and here is the back the darts have been sewn and also the zip line these are the lining pieces as well for the back and the front next now we are going to be cutting the neckline on the front now the armhole if you didn't cut out the armhole too at the beginning this is also the time to cut that out so what you would do is fold your front piece into two like so mark out your shoulder your slant your uh, shoulder mark out your armhole and then every other thing so for this neckline we're using the v neckline so I just went in by 4 inch which is the neck width and then I came down by 7 inches which is the neck depth. I connected in the slant 
and then from the middle of that slant i went in by half inch and then i curved up and down so that we don't just have a straight v shape for the neckline let it be curved a bit so now that we have cut out the neckline we are going to place the lining the front lining and repeat the same thing so after cutting out the neck for the front next we are going to mark out our measurements and then go sew on the lining and also on the main fabric so i'm marking the bust measurement up and then on the half length point We'll mark the waist round divided by four, and then on the down part, we'll mark the upper hip measurement divided by four as well. Next, we're going to go join the front, so the front and the back right sides together on those lines. We'll repeat the same thing for the main fabric, then we'll also join the shoulders together. So after joining the front and the back pieces together, our blouse is coming together as you can see. Next, I'm opening up the zip, the zip uh, back, and I've also added the zip to the main fabric. So there's already zip on the main fabric, but the lining is no zip. So we're going to be joining the two together now. I've opened the zip line on the back piece, and then I'm opening up the zip itself on the main fabric. Now we are going to use our lining now to turn the neckline and the zip side. So we're going to place them together like so. And then sew on the zip line very close to the zipper teeth. And then we will sew the neckline all the way like so. And then get to the other zip side and do the same thing. Sew very close to the zip line. After that, we'll have this. Our inside is clean. Unfortunately, I didn't film that. Next, now it's time to cut out the sleeve. So you will just measure around this finished armhole, whatever you have. Add two to that and then cut out your sleeve. Here, I folded my fabric into four and then I went down by four inches and I made a curve. And then I'm measuring to be sure that I got that 10 inches I got from the armhole plus another. Two inches down here i am marking the sleeve round divided by two and then another two inches for allowance so your sleeve could be anything depending on what you want but this is basically it on how to make an evil blouse it's just a straight blouse depending on which technique you want to use i use the shoulder dart technique in this video i hope you have learned a thing or two you can also add lining to your sleeve just like I did, but it's also optional. You don't have to add lining to your sleeve. Your sleeve could be only the lace fabric like in most pictures. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please, if you have learned a thing or two in this video, kindly, kindly give it a like. Also, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Bye.